Yo, what up, my tubers? We're back for some more drafting on Arena. We have the Arena Cube back. This is the um, similar to the last one that was up. So the one that I was drafting all the blue and red in. Um, yeah, hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Today is my birthday. We just finished the birthday stream, so that was fantastic. I guess it'll be the day after when this gets uploaded. But uh, a couple changes they've made, or at least overarching um changes they made they've removed cards like sublime epiphany um skull of the lost troves and a few other things but they've namely re uh, removed the two cards that i really like to draft so from what i've noticed from playing today on stream aggro is the real deal in this format uh, and the slower control decks really have a hard time of things uh, so we might be seeing a lot of aggressive decks here in the cube but with that being said, I think here we just got a first pick burn down the house. Like I said, on stream today, I was doing a lot of non controly decks. So I'm going to try doing that. Um, we tried blue-red once or twice, and it just did not go very well. So unlike in the previous version of the cube where that was seemingly the best thing I could be doing, uh, that might not be the right choice here. It's just that creatures in this format, or in Magic nowadays, have just so much utility and value on their own, right? Like, it's so hard to have a one-for-one -one removal spell and uh, have it be effective versus any type of creature that, when it enters the battlefield, has some kind of, you know, effect or something. So, with that being said, Elspeth's Nightmare, a very easy second pick. This has been one of the one of the better removal spells in the format just because, again, it does have multiple effects and you can get more than one card from it. So, I like taking that here to follow up Burn Down the House. Okay, a couple good white cards, Blade Splicer, Brutal Cathar, Venerated Loxodon. I think I like taking the Legion Warboss here. I'm going to try to go like a little bit more mid-rangey. I'm going to take all of the best removal spells that I can. Um, but in the meantime, we'll also take some good aggressive strategies. So Legion Warboss, not so good in control, but uh, we'll see if we can build a deck where this turns into something really good. But like I said... You'll notice like so many creatures here as we take Thief of Sanity. It's just so hard to get value off of them because imagine you use like a removal spell on Moldrifter while well, your opponent's already drawn two cards off of it or whatever, you know? Ledger Shredder's fantastic. Typhoon. Stency Uprising is good value. Thief of Sanity, I think, is the better choice here. Uh, I will probably do some number of best of three drafts for the record uh, in upcoming YouTube videos just because I think... Um, you can kind of fade the aggro decks that way, or that is to say, you can build for them, you can sideboard versus them, whereas, you know, best of one, which I'm playing right now, you do get to play against a, a wider variety of decks, but if you have one bad draw versus an aggro deck, you know, you just fold. Ah, man. I... <laughs> one of my favorite cards you'll you'll note from previous cubes, I don't think it was in the, the last version of the cube, the one that has Sublime Epiphany, but man, this card is so, so fun. Sadly, it hasn't been very good for me. Like I said, aggressive strategies are really, really the things you want to be doing here for the most part. I, I bet you you could have good decks where Discover is useful, but it's hard to pass a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. This card is just way too good. So many good cards in this format, um, and Fable is one of the top tiers. Phyomancer, a recent inclusion, you'll note. Yeah, we'll take that Fable. Unlike me to pass a Discover the Formula, but here we are. And if I'm passing Discover the Formula, you know it's not the right strategy in this cube. Not a great pack here for us. No good fixing. I mean, I guess we could take Castle Vantress, but if we're just splashing Thief, this is unlikely to be played. I guess there's a chance we could end up maybe playing like Mardu? Maybe like Esper, uh, Mardu Aristocrats or something? I'm not going to take Celebrant here, but we'll take Courtyard. Okay, Shatter Skull Smashing's decent. Requisitioner's okay. Sniper's okay. We'll just take the uh, smash. That's always good. Nice pack here. Thoughtseize versus Citadel. I'm going to go with the Thoughtseize. I don't doubt you could go, uh, build a good Citadel deck that was red and black, but it seems a lot harder to do 
than if you're like black green. So, and Thoughtseize is always just good, right? Trespasser on the wheels, fantastic. Although we are glutted on the three drops, that's okay. Okay, yeah. Oh, man, I want to take Den of the Bug Bear here really badly, but getting the Croaksa on the wheel seems really good. It's perfectly into the deck. So does the Synthesizer. Yeah, like I said, I don't think we're true aggro. We're more mid-rangey right now, but uh, this is looking pretty good. We'll see if that uh, Thief of Sanity actually gets splashed, because right now we have a good core, and if I don't pick up any fixing, or even just much fixing, it, period... I'm not going to try to go out of my way to play this. But good start. Happy with the first big burn down, uh, burn down the house. Solid creatures. Another kind of free roll card we can take here. Yeah, that makes sense. We have both the Agademes and the Smashing now. I see Manipulator. Dollhouse is kind of cute, but not very good. And like I said, we could still potentially be Mardu, so I'll take the Priest. This was the pack that had nothing for us. We took the Concealed Courtyard out of that one. What are the best ways to get cre or cards in the graveyard for Kroxa? I guess Fable's really good. Cheap interaction like Thoughtsea is really good. We don't have much removal, burn-wise anyways. That Harvester is interesting too. Okay, move on to pack number two. A couple really good lands and a couple solid two drops. I think I prefer taking the two drop creatures here over taking the lands. Uh, we might even wield the Xander's Lounge or the Haunted Ridge. Man's also great, but let's take a two drop here. I'm going to go with the Jadar. I think the Skyclave Shade is more likely to wheel anyways, but we do want a two drop of some variety. So yeah, we'll take Jadar. Seems like a weird first pick. And again, if I'm first picking Jadar, you know the uh, strategies have changed. But here we are. Good start though. Things I'm looking out for, like a braid would be very good. Heartless Act. Uh, Infernal Grasp. What other good two drops are there? In red black. There's like Rahilda, there's Crypt Breaker. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, there's the Rahilda, like I was saying. Okay, and the Infernal Grasp, actually. Looks like I summoned both of those cards. Wow. And a Dragon Skull Summit to boot. Hmm. I'm going to go for the creature here. You'd rather be a... Proactive deck, then a reactive deck. So I'm going to take the Rahilda over the removal spell and then just be sad that I'm passing the uh, fixing. Grim Lava Mancer's solid. Zeriel's probably pretty good here too. Let's try Zeriel. If we're going to keep our curve low, then Zeriel is one of our top end cards. Just making devils seems nice. Yeah, I like that over the Grim Lava Mancer. Blood Fountain, Ornithopter, or whatever. The whisper of my name. Chandra Torch of Defiance here looking juicy. Good pack again. Battery's fine. Opportunist pretty good. Base Breaker can be fantastic. Chain Whirler's okay. Karn could be okay. And then we have like the clock and the Opus, but... <laughs> yeah, Chandra's just too good here. Ox of Agonis. Nope, that is a very easy glory bringer. Will we will lightning strike? Probably not. Glory is too good though. Yeah, we have a nice, nice red black mid rangey deck. Okay, a couple of good removal spells here if we don't want to just take the blade of the Oni. 
We're not trying to burn down the opponent super quickly, so Searing Blood doesn't look as good as probably one of these. Is the flashback on the Devil's Play worth it? It's like fine. I guess I'd rather take the Fury. Three mana for four damage to any target seems okay. We'll take Visionary, Young Pyromancer, and Viashino Pyromancer now. Uh, what is our instant sorcery count? Five, four total. So Pyro is probably not great. At least it's not great yet. Oh, and especially since two of the sorceries are the DFCs. I guess Visionary might be the better choice here. But Pyro still has a lot of upside. I guess, yeah, I'll go for the upside of Pyro, since we still have another third pack to go. Or Bran. Could I just be cutting black and going full mono red? Yeah, I guess I could. It is definitely a possibility, although... We did get both of the black red lands back. I don't think we want the Jaxus. Let's take the Ridge. Perfect. Dragon Skull Summit here over Hive of the Eye Tyrant. The fixing is more important to me. I'm guessing I'm going to end up cutting the Agademes, though. As the black is more of a splash at this point, and Agademes is going to be way too hard to cast, so... Torbrand should still be good, even if we end up playing some amount of black, right? I guess Harvester might be okay now as well. Harvester is really good with Warboss. What happens is you make the goblin at the beginning of combat and then use the uh, the goblin to crew the harvester so it doesn't have to chump attack in. Right, because if your opponent has a 2-2, they just block, right? Fountain is a maybe. Okay. Wow, so gross. Battery doesn't look as good as Chain Whirler here. I mean, what does mono red look like? Dang. Faithless Looting was not the card we were looking to wheel. Although if I end up running the Kroxa, or just the black in general, Faithless Looting probably gets a little bit better. There's Searing Blood. And the Pyro. Okay. Yeah, now we're getting a Lelia here. Passing one of my favorite cards in the cube, the key to the archive. Lelia is so strong. 3 mana, 2-2 two, two haste. Gets bigger. Get to cast cards. Very hard to pass that one. Rekindling Phoenix is another hard one to pass, but ooh, we have Kolagons, we have Priest, we have Black Market Connections. A lot of good cards here. Oops. I'm guessing the Phoenix is just a sticky threat, too good to pass up. Okay. Right now we only have three two-drop creatures, though. Three two-drops. One, two, three, four, five three-drops. There goes a Kali Toss. Nothing in this pack that we're playing. All of Oracle is also pretty weak, I'm guessing. Yeah, we only have three instants and sorceries right now. I will take the Kali Toss just because the card is so good, but it's very unlikely at the current that we end up playing it. Hmm. Ah, these black cards are tempting, I tell ya. These black cards are tempting, but I'm guessing that they're just going to be cuts. Not even worth splashing any of them, realistically. Yeah, just need more early game plays. These aren't the type of decks I prefer in cube, but... Like I said, it does feel like these are the strategies that are currently best. Getting cut off on red, perhaps. 
as this is pick four and not a single red card. There's Approach here, there's Field of the Dead here, a couple of okay black cards. I guess maybe we end up playing Life of Toshiro. Or maybe Dreadwander if I need the one drops in black. All right, there's a Braid, that's good. There's Bomat Courier, that's also good. Is Bomat better than a Braid? Yeah, probably. Just the cheap creature. Oh, you know what? That Scrounger was surprisingly fantastic as well, because that just gives us a free uh, use of these black lands. So, like, I'm not going to run any swamps, but with the Scrounger, we kind of just have some easy black sources to bring this back. That's, that's a nice one. Daredevil also very good as we pass a Sedgemore Witch. Okay. Yeah, and Kumano faces Kakazan. Perfect. Definitely ended up getting there. Need to find one or two more playables. I could probably run 16 lands very easily. In fact, I think that makes a lot of sense. 16 lands with uh, Shatter Skull Smashing. So two more playables. I don't have any in my sideboard right now because I don't think Faithless Looting is what we want. I don't think there was much to wheel, though. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Take the Blood Artist. Don't plan on splashing that. Oh man, we wield every single one of those good black cards. I guess this is splashable. Hmm. Hall of Oracles, did that end up getting any good? No, it didn't. I really would like to not splash any hard black cards if possible. I mean, I guess Faithless Looting in a Pinch is fine. Just one more playable. We're not running Hedron Archive here. What did I take the Bomat Courier over? I guess maybe the Bomat was a worse pickup because it could have wheeled. Ah, oh, light up the stage. Okay. Whew. Got there. And I think that will just be the deck. So, thought I was black red mid range to begin. Ended up in. Damn, late Sedgemore. Ended up in mono red, kind of aggro. I'm a little bit concerned this isn't aggressive enough. Well, okay. It, it looks pretty good. All right. So again, throw in the black sources for the Scrap Heap Scrounger graveyard activation. Otherwise, we just throw in 14 mountains. And we will call it. Let's go. Mono Red for the very first of the updated Arena Cube. I'm a changed man. I'm a changed man. Okay, round one here. Not on the play. How unlucky. Decent looking hand though, especially versus a creature deck if the opponent's on a creature deck. Heavy creature deck. Turn one pelt collector. Okay. So most likely going to be using a searing blood on that next turn. Oh, interesting. You know what? Now I think I'm going to get the Bomat Courier online instead. If somehow they don't play a creature, we can just Chain Whirler away their Pelt Collector. Hmm. 
Green, white. I'm a little bit worried their creatures are going to be bigger than ours in the end. That's so good for us to see. Okay, smack me for one, I'm assuming. Oh no, they didn't. Well, let's slam the Chain Whirler. They're gonna sack the Alcea and give the Pelt Collector Pro Red. And that's fine. I'm still gonna attack with the Bomat here. I don't mind if they trade. Perfect, that's good too. We actually didn't want them to trade, but... Brutal Cathar. Wow, this is nice. Get to Searing Blood the Cathar. Get back our Chain Whirler. Poke them for another one. Let's lead on Experimental Synthesizer. Okay, that's a little bit too good to pass up. We still have a good play next turn of, like, Searing Blood plus Fury. That's fine. That's fine. Wow, Chandra too, jeez. Um, too many good plays here. Okay, well, let's get the pressure rolling. Let's uptick here. Add mana. Blood the Brutal Cathar. Get back our Chain Wither. Make them lose four life overall. I assume this is one of our better matchups. Creature-based deck that's probably a little bit slower than us. But it doesn't look like they have too much... Uh, too much in the way of big haymakers. Though we don't know that for sure yet. Seem to be in a pretty miserable spot, though, I would say. I guess we can also just burn them down really quickly with Chandra. And, uh, Fury. That's pretty cute. So, Fall of the Imposter puts a 1-1 counter on their Druid. The Druid now has plus, or adds 3 mana. Okay, I see. That looks good. Oh, that was the last card in their hand, though. Oh, never mind. No. I don't think they can win. Yeah, this is fine. Lily is nice. Let's go ahead and add manas. Lelia. Crew. Smack. See what Lelia hits. Okay, she's going to turn into a 3 3. So, unless they double chump here, they just die to Fury. And I assume they're only going to single chump. If at all. If 
Oh, they're just going to kill the Harvester? That's fine, too. Well, they need to add white, though. Okay. Yep, no chump, GG. Fury to base. And a nice little 1 0 start here. Never felt very uh, far behind, except for on like turn 1 or turn 2 when they had the Pelt Collector, but otherwise that was just an easy smashing. Alright, 1 0. Let's keep it going. On to game number 2. On the play. Looks okay. Just a bunch of two drops and Zerial. So we'll lead with Scrounger for maximum pressure. Run it with the Rogrin Triome. Ah. So they're probably on a slower control deck. Arena is telling me that they have a Pact of Negation in their hand. <laughs> kind of funny. Land and smack. I'm going to go ahead and play out the young Pyro over the Pyromancer because with Torbrand, the Pyromancer is actually better. We don't have any instants or sorceries for the Pyromancer to start making 1-1s one anyways, and both are just 2-1s, so... I think this makes more sense. That's fine, whatever. Kind of weird they didn't bounce the Scrounger instead, but I guess they are scared of me making a bunch of tokens. Okay, they did top. Pretty good for us. Like I said, I don't think slow decks are the thing to do in this format. Not that you can't can't have a good control deck, but at least from what I've seen, the aggressive decks just really punch them in the face. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go with Lelia here instead since we drew that. Plan is to um just make another token with Zerial. We don't care about the pyro. If it gets countered or whatever, that's great. And the sick thing is, even if the opponent has a... Say they have the giant wrath here. The cloaked giant or whatever. They still die to me going Torbran into pyro into Zerial haste. Like, I, I, I'm kind of hoping they have wrath here. To tap out. Oh, no, that's not true. Because we know they also have the Pact of Negation in their hand. Oh, that doesn't even... Okay, well. GG's. Well, uh, so how do we get them to... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I guess I'd rather them counter the Torbran. Doesn't matter. They have to tap out to counter this. Pact of Negation. 
So. Slow and control, not the way to do it in this format. Yep. They're at one life. I have two devils that ping them for one when they die. I also have a chain whirler, which is lethal, and then Lelia, which is also lethal. Not much to say there. So there's Day of Judgment in the format. There's the Realm Cloak Giant. As like the... Oh, and Farewell. So three true Wrath effects. But then in other colors, there's like Meat Hook Massacre, Burn Down the House, Sweltering Suns. Is that it? Like not very much mass removal. You do have a lot of individual targeted removal, but... Like I was mentioning during the draft, creatures just have so many good abilities now that um, one for one removal doesn't cut it. So play a creature and smash, and that's the cube. Game number three. We have correctly chosen to be on the play with a pretty bad hand, but I'm going to keep it. It's just good enough to keep. But it's certainly borderline. Really want to draw something to do next turn. Although I guess I won't mind just furying a creature if they have one. That's honestly probably not the worst draw. I don't care if they kill the Bowmat. If they don't, great, but... Let's go ahead and Faithless. Two lands here, I guess? I guess I'll kind of care if they kill the Bowmat now. But it won't be the end of the world. Hmm, they didn't. I see. Okay. That's fine. So we get a free roll this Legion War Boss at least. I'll go ahead and play out the Smashing as a land now. damage, right? Yeah, so. You're either champion. Get him for five. We'll play that land number five. We're not going to play any more lands out, though. We don't need more than five, and plus we have the Faithless looting. Alright, so that's going to enter as a three, two, three with lifelink, I guess? That's fine. And a dog. Sure. They just sack the dog in response here so they don't take three damage, but we need to get rid of that first. With remember with the fury all the damage stays on their creatures. Make a bunch of tokens. Actually, let's go ahead and attack. And we'll pump up a devil here. They're going to eat the war boss. And they're still going to take six, go to five. And that damage stays, so I think that's worth it.
You got it. Two mana, two, two. So it looks like we're just playing against another aggro deck. And, uh, yeah, we were on the play and had a better draw. Ah, that's very good, though. Okay. So they're effectively at 10 life now. Did I take that a braid? I don't think I did, did I? Hmm. That's annoying, but... That's fine. We still, again, because of the fury, we get to just keep smashing it in without fear. Uh, guess we can go like that instead. That means we preserve our black source. Yep, smack in. Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but... Was not what I was expecting. So all their creatures have damage just stuck on them now. That's a very good draw. Damn, they get to eat my 2-2 devil. Now ah, that vampire's doing work. So close to killing him here, but too much lifelink. I wonder. There is a chance I kill them if I just attack with the devils. Next turn. Ooh, okay, so they're gonna kill the Fury. Hmm, that's annoying. Obviously a really bad draw. Alright, let's attack with both of the Devils and the Scrounger. See how they block. But now I think we're going to be losing unless I can kill him this turn. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so... They go back up to 8. Ooh, fly or something. Um, You know, surprisingly, the Harvester is not much of an issue anymore. Because they can't gain life anymore. So I think we might as well just Chandra uptick here. Jeez. Alright. Yeah, that'll probably do her. Bit of a flood out. Looked really good, and then they gained way too much life, and we just bricked out on the turn that we needed to find something. It was close with the Fury, though. It was very close. So they could, like, crew the Harvester with the Ogre Head if they wanted to. And then equip it. Or they could Dire Fleet Daredevil. Yeah. That's probably game. Ugh.
Oh, well, my guess is I'm probably... Oh, and they have Angel Fire Ignition. Okay, that's good enough. They gain way too much life again. Good beats. Got kind of crushed there after they stabilized. Go on to the next. Game four incoming. On the play. Man, these hands. Needed more pressure, not interaction here. Maybe we can draw something off the top. That's good. It's not what we wanted, but that's going to be good, especially versus a blue deck. Mindstone. Definitely just going to run out the uh, Chain Whirler on turn three. We need to apply pressure. I can't wait for them to play like a one toughness creature and just hope that works, you know? Okay, that's fine. Not a bad, uh... Not a bad pivot there. I knew you need this will be easy. Okay. And now we get the Chandra talk tick uh Chandra clock ticking. Planeswalkers are pretty brutal. Oh speaking of brutal, Eldest Reborn. Absolutely disgusting here. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, this is the problem. If I had any, like, one drop or two drop, you know, we would have just absolutely crushed them. But we didn't. So, Eldest Reborn was able to pick off a Chandra. Very gross. Interesting. No plays is pretty interesting. Right, let's just make another devil. I'm gonna go for the glory bringer, I guess. I guess they no, they could have the five mana counter. Well, yeah, okay. If they have the the gale, whatever it's called, then they get me. Sure, wandering Emperor, eat my glory bringer. Good beats. Good beats. Yeah, I mean, we can never lose this game if we have a one drop or a two drop. That's so gross. <laughs> it's my turn. Good news is Chandra cannot kill Zeriel. But they might use it to ramp up to... What they could also do is Chandra down tick on my untapped devil. I would get to shoot the Chandra to finish her off, but then they'd be... Oh, they're going to go for approach. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's rumble, baby. So now we are on a very fast clock, and the opponent is still at 24 life. Well, like I said, control decks shouldn't be able to do this, but I just didn't do anything until turn three on my red aggro deck, so it beats. Mm, yeah, that's no good. That'll probably do her. I guess I need to leave back one devil to block the uh, Hall of Storm Giants. This is a waste of my time. All right, I don't have much confidence in this game. They're at 22 life, and I need to try to kill them before they draw their approach, which is only four cards deep, five cards deep.
Crazy, crazy, crazy. Man, notably if I had gone with Zeriel instead of Chandra too. Oof. Well, this ain't helping, my friends. We'll go for the extra combat. We'll say go. Can't attack because they can activate their land. <laughs> and they have the tuck as well. Perfect. Holy smokes. Well, I guess this is what I get for uh, crap talking all of the uh, control decks. <laughs> like I said, though, that shouldn't happen. Like, that only happened because I kept a kind of a sketchy hand. So, two and two. We'll see if we can rattle back from here. Go, go, go. All right. Game five after we got smashed. This hand looks okay. At least it has something to do on turn two. We really just need to find a fourth land here and uh, should be in good shape. Beautiful. Turn one hive of the eye tyrant for the OP. Red, black. Perfect. This might be very hard to lose since we're the ones on the play. Our draw looks gross. That's fine. Let's go with the Rekindling Phoenix here. As it's a pretty sticky threat. Normally you want to run out the Torbrand a little bit later. Gaunty. It's good. It ain't good enough. So, I have a couple different options. I mean, Glorybringer and Smackin' for 8 in the air looks pretty good, though. Because then, even if they use a removal spell on their turn to deal with one of my flyers, Torbran with the surviving flyers lethal. Oh, that ain't good enough. Kill the glory, and you're just dead. GG's. <laughs> okay, well, that's the way uh, the deck is supposed to go, I guess. Was that fun? No, not really. But we curved out. We were on the play. Didn't punt. But we followed the three rules of engagement. See if we can do that again on to game number five. On the draw, this hand is very keepable. Red, green. Oh, even drew a one drop on turn one. Just like we drew it up. Another arena tell here. It seems like they have a Tamiyo safekeeping in their hand. I can't think of too many other things they could have for one green mana. Nice. A quote unquote free once upon a time. And a maze mind tome. That's pretty annoying. Hmm. So let's just run out of Rahilda. Versus a red deck like this, yeah, you really want to just activate and flip the tome as soon as possible to gain that 4 life. We're going to be in a bad spot because they get to go Dryad into land, hold up Tamiyo, say, oh, they don't have a fourth land. That's really good. Okay, so if that's the case, we actually do get to attack with at least the Rahilda. Uh, 
And then they're still gonna lose a couple life here. Dryad's gone. Next turn we can either Fable or we can Dire Fleet Daredevil there uh, once upon a time. Forsaken Crossroads. Okay. Do a tapped out Pilgrim's Eye though. That's. Hmm. Well, they did just scry and. Okay, whatever. I don't think that sequencing was right, but we'll take it. Let's attack for two first. They chump, great. If they allow it to hit, we get to steal something. This is where things start to get a little bit scary, though. Because now they have access to five mana, so things like Thrag Tusk or Gargaroth or Massacre can be problems. Um, yeah, we'll keep the uh, cards in our hand instead of drawing the random two. I'm going to discard the Young Pyromancer, and I think I'm going to discard the land as well. All right, that's a good hit, obviously. Hoping they don't have a way to kill the Glorybringer for at least a turn or two. Uh, that is kind of weird. Okay, we take that. I think we're going to just Dire Fleet Daredevil there once upon a time and see if we can find... Something good to go with it. They're going to go back up to 11 after toming here. Well, unfortunate. But presumably we are in a good spot. There aren't too many more wrath effects that uh, Jund could have. Oh, that's pretty spicy though. Now, if they don't hit a creature that kills something... Oh, the reflection's an enchantment! Wow, what a hit. That was a fantastic hit for them, actually. Good stuff. I was going to say, if they don't hit something that kills the Fable, the Fable gets to just copy the Glorybringer and keep going off. Since we have looting in our deck, we want to keep the uh, mountain. Minsk and Boo. Fight the good fight. Actually, fight all the fights. Knock the evil right out of there. Okay. Yep, they might as well attack with the. Uh... Oh, I guess, no, that doesn't make sense. Well, if they don't kill a flyer, they're just dead here. Because the burn down a house making tokens will kill them. Alright, let's go. Was that three and one? Seems alright for... Oh, three and two! That's right, we have... Wait, four and two? I guess I've played more games than I thought. Four and two now, going into game number uh, seven. <laughs> oh, 
on to that game number seven. And okay, we're going to go ahead and run out the turn two Dire Fleet. Hold the smashing for now. Let's play out the summit turn one, I guess. Doesn't really matter. This could be turn two, turn three, turn four. We'd have to play the uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker post combat, but. Sorry, we'd have to play the Glorybringer po post combat after the Fable token attacked. Oh, this definitely feels like another opponent who has once upon a time given priority being held. <laughs> uh, they should not cast it now, it doesn't make any sense. They should wait until they draw at the very least. Okay. Smack for two. Just keep curving out. They actually still have no reason to cast Once Upon a Time. If that's their only play. Unless they have something they can do at the end of the turn. Maybe they have like a Commando. Cathar or whatever. Interesting. Ah, that's pretty good. I guess they're gonna blow up my Fable. That's fine though. We get to Chain Whirler away the Knight of Autumn and smack in for four, get a treasure. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep the pressure alive. If they for some reason have Wrath of, or not Wrath of God, Day of Judgment in their deck, then they get me really good, but I'm not gonna play around that one card. Chariot's good. Not good enough, but it's good here. We just get to keep attacking. So they're going to take seven, they're going to go to six. We're going to play out both of our non-Glorybringer creatures. And obviously, ideally, we draw an untapped land next turn for glory and just smack it for the win. But even if we don't, it should be pretty hard for them to stabilize from here on out. Interesting. Hmm. That is... I guess that makes sense. Okay, I'll block. I'm fine with them using a trick to deal with my Harvester. Might as well gain the three right now while we can as well. Gain it now and then gain it on the attack next turn. Yep, so land wins for the glory. And even though I don't draw land, they're still in awkward positions. That'll do just fine. Alright, slam it. And that is that, baby. Up to five wins. <sighs> Stupid, sexy, mono red. On to game eight. Ooh, 
damn. Only thing holding this back is that we're on the draw here. One drop, two drop, three drop, three drop removal on the play would have been nice. Oh! Alright. Is this going to be a mirror match? If it is, we might want to hold the Dire Fleet Daredevil. Okay. Yeah, like I was saying, we might want to hold the Dare, Dire Fleet Daredevil now, because now we can get the play with fire. So I might even let them hit me for... Um... Two damn. Oh, that's right, it gets to flip. So it deals four damage now? Yikes. Okay, well, good beats. I don't think it was right to play this out. Lelia and my Zerial. Hmm. Oh, and no land, though. Okay. Yeah, 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 we're still in great shape, then. I mean, kind of scary that they have five spells in their hand, but... Ah, that's really good for us. So I probably want to get the war boss online next turn then if they don't play a creature. Just because I get another 1-1 one -one that's for free. That they don't get to eat. And then we can follow up with Torbran on a later turn. We're going to go ahead and light up a stage here as well. Use the mana while we can. Okay, well. <laughs> I suppose it's nice to get through two extra lands. Tap land's great for us. Sure, they lose two. That was a lot of land in a row. We're still going to lose this game, even though they were getting screwed, because we just flooded out completely there. If they have a kill spell for Torbran, we're probably dead. Without some lucky top decks. That's a really good sign for us. Now it's super unlikely they kill Torbran without... A black removal spell since they've already used the Mephit's Enthusiasm. Oh, did not expect Shouldred. I definitely just fire this off. This is six damage, so... I guess they could have, like, Siege Gang Commander here. Ah, two cheap removal spells, maybe. Okay, that works. They can't attack, but we just need to find anything. They can get back their Phoenix from the Graveyard, for example, here to a buff. For another blocker. They can play Glorybringer. Question is, are they going to attack with the Glorybringer? And kill the token? Because then if I draw any creature, they just lose. Okay, yeah. No, I like their play. Try to high roll. If this is the case, they should attack with both, but... So I go down to 11. Wow, and we lose now. We lose because we flooded. That's insane. Terrible luck. They get to play their Phoenix and kill me if they go for it. Terrible, terrible. Hmm. I mean, maybe they don't. Maybe they get scared. For some reason, but that doesn't make any sense. Any creature would have won. Effectively, any spell, I assume, would have won here.
There's no way they don't attack with both, right? Wow! What are they doing? They're next leveling themselves! That works! Holy smokes! Okay. We got very lucky. Oh, man. We got very unlucky, and then we needed to get extremely lucky to win that. They probably just overthought it. They were, you know... That was... Wow. Crazy luck. We'll take it, though. Let's see if we can uh, convert that trophy, get that final win. On to the finals. Make it or break it. We're on the draw here. A couple of two drops, three drop, and the glory. Certainly a keep. We're already on borrowed time, so... I guess we should just be thankful if we, uh... <laughs> That we get to play this match. Forest. I like seeing forest. I think. I almost definitely like seeing forest island. Okay. So they might have like brazen borrowers and, you know, hope, fading hopes and whatnot, but... There isn't as much interaction for them. As they would have in the other three colors. Oh, there we go. A little bit of Sultai action up in here. Blink of an eye, sure. Alright, well, we've drawn nothing but land this game, but the good news is we do have the Fable of the Mirror Breaker to pitch two of these lands away next turn if we get to... activate the second mode of the Saga. They're gonna copy my Fable, interesting. Let's go ahead and discard two lands. Nice. Uh, I'm going to attack and see if they block first. I don't mind them blocking. If they don't block, I'm going to go ahead and shoot down their token. Hey, over here. And then we get to go from there. They're in a pretty rough spot because I have board presence and a planeswalker in addition. They discarded Kalitas, yikes. So they must be, I mean obviously they're, they don't have double black currently. Chariot again. Okay. That's a very good draw, so we can bait them here. I'm gonna Searing Blood their token, presumably they're gonna crew the Chariot in response. They're going to lose three life once the cat dies. And then we're going to add two mana with Chandra. Play Glory. Smack and Exert. And that, that might just end the game. Hello, they say. <laughs> Yeah, my draw lined up pretty damn fantastically versus UOP. I do apologize. Oh, that's right! Because they copied my Fable with Mythos, it's a token, and so they don't even get the final final mode of it. This almost feels bad. Almost. The best thing they could have here is Meat Hook Massacre for two... But then Glorybringer doesn't die, and I still have Chandra, I guess. I can't think of too much else they could have. <laughs> well, they had it. <laughs> uh, let's just ping them for two. Ping them for one. Put him to seven, four, no. Nope. 
We don't want to play the Bowmat because we kill him with the Fury next turn by this play. Not good enough. GG's. Are you enraptured by my beauty? So fast, so Uthgart furious. All right, well, we got lucky to even make it to this uh, match, and we did pull it off with pretty, pretty quick ease. Um, that's a trophy, and like I said, at least from what I've seen in this format, aggro is the way to go. Not what I wanted to say. Uh, obviously, you can still have some good control decks, but you need to draft like the removal pretty aggressively, and uh, really keep an eye out. If you are going to try to build the slower decks for the Meat Hook Massacres, the uh, uh, Swirling, Swirling Suns? Something Suns. The, <laughs> the Day of Judgments, the, the Farewells. Because otherwise decks like this will just run you over. So, thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this Arena Cube draft. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you back here tomorrow for some more. Peace out.